Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. And I'm going to just tell you, I don't think I would have ever been able to pull that off, but you did it. And you said you were going to make it work. And like clockwork, it happened. Well, thank you. Hey, this is Michelle Spiba, your practical priestess of wisdom. And I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. And so stick with me because today we oh we are cooking up something good and something highly practical and useful when we delve into how to plan a big career win. Yeah, I'll see you on the flip. I'm inspired today, you guys, and my notes show it. They are brimming full. So I'm going to try to see if we can put this all into one talk. And if not, we'll move it to a second day. But I usually don't like to do that so that you can just get the full thing. So let me stop babbling and get into it. How to plan a big career win. So I'm going to just tell you that when you are setting out to hit a goal, achievements or whatever, you have to know that it's up to you to plan them. You can't just look at someone's career track or pathway that's external. It's not going to work out. I'm just going to be honest with you, especially not with the way today, today's world is run. And so there are some things that you need to be aware of. And hopefully this is going to help shortcut it because we're all out here trying to make a living, trying to make our way and our income and trying to get out of um, whatever it is that causes us pain uh, due to lack or want or um, lack that's too far away from achievement of our desires. And so when I'm talking about how to plan a win, I am talking about how to have an accomplished achievement. And um, I decided to just put it down to career, but this applies to other things as well. All right. Whether you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to gain health or you're trying to upgrade, update, or even get a relationship, a lot of this is going to... eh, probably apply. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to say is this, is that you have got to start understanding that it's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of self-restraint and strength and ego control. These are going to be your friends. Patience, self-restraint, and ego control. And the reason why they're going to be your friends is because to have a big win, like especially like a big career win, you have got to learn how to to Go in the dark and not get uh, your accolades for a pretty long time. You see, a lot of people, when they are trying to hit milestones and all of this, you can tell what's driving them based on how they want to be seen. And they don't, they discount the power of invisibility and the power of knowing when to be visible and when not to be. Now, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, so let me make sure I, I lay down some, some things that I want to say before we get into that part. Okay, so now that we've established that, you're going to need patience, self-restraint, and ego control. You know, stroke your ego yourself so that you're not trying to get it from others. There are going to be some highly desirable skills that either you need to get or you need to strengthen to mastery level, if at all possible, while you're going along the way. And those skills are going to be, and this is not in any kind of order, but they're all important. Critical thinking skills, adaptability, and being a hedge fox. So let me break that down real fast. With critical thinking, that is going to be where you're able to do an assessment of yourself and your environment 
And this critical thinking is not just going to be about analyzing what's going on. The critical thinking is going to be about proper utilization of effort and of uh, things that you need to have in your arsenal to deal with it, including uh, social and emotional um, management, uh, intelligence. Because with the critical thinking of today, you cannot be oblivious to um, what's going on relationship-wise around you, or you will miss the boat. And so with the critical thinking of today, it's imperative that you understand that it's not just about being a great analyst. It's not about seeing opportunity. It's not even about being clever. It is about all those things, plus being highly astute in your knowledge of emotional intelligence and management for you know for yourself and others and for social emotion I mean a social um a, uh, intelligence and management because those are the things that the critical skills and the critical thinking that you need are going to have to be pulled on to come up with and get this it's no longer just about uh, problem solving it's no longer about innovative problem solving. It is also about creative, innovative problem solving. And I want to just make a, a differentiation right here. We have moved from where it's okay to just be highly intelligent. No longer can you be really skilled at something and really knowledgeable about something, but you cannot relate that information to Joe Q Public, who may not be highly um knowledgeable, but is insanely creative. You have now got to become multilingual in how you communicate, how you solve, and how you approach. And I'm going to be talking to you about a framework. I, I mentioned it a little bit yesterday, but I'm going to be talking a little bit more about it today. So just think of it as me giving you some agile, lean, Six Sigma kind of training uh, as it applies to you, okay, in a wisdom way. So when we're talking about this critical thinking, we are talking about a person who is able to produce creative and innovative problem solving for issues. And that means that you cannot just look at something from one or two angles. You know, we've always been talking about uh, looking at the angles of things and, and teaching yourself how to change your perspective and your perception. And so today, I'm hoping that you get that when it comes to planning your big career win, that these are your desirable, highest desirable skills that you need to have. So now that you know, you got to have critical thinking that is able to tap into the social and emotional intelligence and management, as well as being able to parse out and see opportunity and do analysis. And, you know, we can go and, 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 and to be able to produce um creative and innovative problem solving, you then need to work on, and we've talked about this, I devoted an entire podcast to it, a near seamless adaptability quotient. That has become the new IQ. It's called AQ. And the adaptability quotient, I'm working with it in my own self. And I'm going to tell y'all, it is, it's, it's simple in pronouncement and it is a monster in application. Because a near seamless adaptability is like you got to be better than MacGyver. You have got to be able to be like a cat always landing on your feet and quickly getting your bearings about you no matter what the circumstance or the situation at hand. Even if you are ill-equipped to handle what's ahead of you, you have got to be able to figure it out fast enough to find your stability and find your legs as soon as possible because that is what's required. And then the next desirable skill is a skill set is going to be that you are able to produce or do non-routine tasks that span both a speciality and a wide knowledge base. So this is what we call the hedge fox. It's a it's a conflagration of a hedgehog and a fox, where a hedgehog is going to be a specialist, burrowing down to the to the minutia, to um, the different gradients and nuances of, of one subject. 
Whereas the fox is going to be clever and agile to cover a, a large, wide uh, swath of um, his environment and knowing everything about that. Um, at the time of this recording, they have recently come out with some new uh, television programs in the U.S. And I'm not a big television watcher, but I, I caught the premiere of one that um, I it, it appeared that it was going to be a hedge fox kind of character. And when I watched it, it was. And it, the name of it is, um, it's a name of a, a person, Lincoln something. You can look it up, <laughs> but um, it's a person who is a, a crime solver and he's kind of like that mind hunter person. And the way they have him set up is he is a hedge fox. So his specialty is uh, crime solving with regards to uh, profiling. And he uh, is very knowledgeable. He has a specialty, but then he has a wider general knowledge of environment of of the area that he's in. I, I want to say it's in the New York area where he knows about and has learned and continues to learn about the environment, the history, the infrastructure, the peoples, um, even to the point of knowing what kind of textiles were were done in a certain area at a certain time. And so it's like everywhere you see it, you can, uh, success, success is leaving clues. And um, so I really am uh, wanting you to, to grasp onto the point that it's so important that you have these skills that they're even putting it in our entertainment so that you'll get used to it. Um, because AI is not coming. AI is here. And AI is not bad. AI is not trying to steal anything from us. AI is here to help us to do more of this. And so to plan your big career, I want you to realize that when you go after developing, honing, and sharpening your critical thinking skills that lead to creative, innovative problem solving, when you start getting acclimated to be near seamless in your adaptability where they can drop you anywhere and within the shortest amount of time possible, you have found your legs, your stability, and you're ready to go. And then when you're able to be that hedge fox who does those non-routine tasks that are needed come what may or whatever is thrown at you, you become a powerhouse. All right. So now that we have gotten that done, we've set the foundation of uh, what you need for your skill set, what you need for parts of the components of your character, meaning your patience, uh, your self-restraint, and your ego, let's talk about some application. And I can tell now we're probably going to have to do another part of this um, tomorrow. But I want to talk about the application, and that is crawl, walk, run. Yep. So what you want to do is you want to understand the structures that you must work through to achieve what it is you want to do. And I'm going to tell you, there are going to be patterns, and, I'm, and because I'm focusing on career right now because I can't, I can't make this too broad, I'm going to tell you walk, crawl, walk, run looks like this. So say, for instance, you are an entrepreneur like me, and you are able to see things and problem solve, and they just make the most common sense to you. You're able to see opportunities, and you're able to see between the gaps. You are an entrepreneur. You have an idea that solves problems, and you want to get it done. When you start out, you are a solopreneur by yourself working it out most of the time. OK, and so this is when you're crawling. And as a solopreneur, you have to generate everything. And one thing about a solopreneur, your main goal is to pay the bills. Take care of yourself. <laughs> that is your main goal. And for some people, our career solo entrepreneurs, because that works and it's nothing wrong with that, because the more uh, as a solopreneur, if you're doing it the way we do it online, a high percentage of your revenue comes to you because you have low overhead. You don't have to, you know, pay for a lot of stuff because it's just you. So you're very agile. You're very able to move real quick. And so as that solopreneur, when you're crawling, because you cannot compete with teams or companies, 
you can move quickly. You can take advantage of emerging markets and uh, you can get in quickly, do a market share establishment, build up something to pass it off and all of these things. And you can just be um, flitting about doing what you do, you know, ninja style if you want to. But then If you want to scale up, meaning that you want to make a lot of money, you want to have a big career win, you want write-ups about, you want all this stuff, then you will move to the walk stage. And the walk stage is going to be where you have a team. Um, And that team is going to be like your virtual assistants or a couple of friends. And some people start at the team level. A lot of people actually start at the team level. That's where you walk because there is power in numbers. And when you're all starting out together with a little bit of nothing, it keeps everybody humble at first. And so you're able to take on and do more than that solo person, that solo entrepreneur out there. And that's when you walk. And, and, and because you have the ability to have strong legs while the entrepreneur is still, you know, moving a little slower and in how much they can produce, I'll say, you can gain momentum. And then that momentum turns into, if you want it to be, a company. Now, Robert Kiyosaki, in his quintessential book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then on to the four quadrants, he talks about the different types of people. And he he says it nicely, but he says there are four quadrants, and the quadrants are these. You have an employee, then you have a self-employed, then you have an entrepreneur, and then you have a business, uh, business person slash investor. And when you look at this, if you're looking at it um, the old way, and you could just Google this, it's all over the place. So it's not like I'm telling you anything deep um, or hidden. But on the left-hand side are going to be the employed and the self-employed. And the left-hand side of this is where they are still working for labor. Usually it's time in exchange for money. Uh, A lot of self-employees are going to be doing services. They're going to uh, be uh, plumbers or uh, they're going to uh, offer you um, one-time payment kind of things where you you pay them for a service and then they're done. And so a lot of the income that they receive is going to be from labor that's produced. Okay. On the right-hand side where you have entrepreneurs and you have the um, business owners slash investors, this is going to be where it's earnings driven. So even though you have this entrepreneur, remember we talked about the crawl, walk, run, even though you have this entrepreneur out there that's crawling, the difference between the entrepreneur and the self-employed is the entrepreneur is all about getting residuals, getting recurring, getting royalties, getting things that he or she works for once and then gets paid over and over again. So whereas one person might say, I'll do this service for you the, um, as a self-employed, the entrepreneur is going to be like, um, I'll set this up and you can pay me monthly <laughs> or uh, or I'll set this up and put it out in a marketplace where people can buy it over and over again. And so the focus is a little different because the on this right hand side, they're doing more of earnings. So based on what kind of career you want, you need to make a decision. Do you want um, an income based on labor? Or do you want earnings? And if you find that everything you've done is on the labor side, but you've wanted earnings, you can definitely move over to that. And that means that you have to discover what domain you're in and then what kind of accomplished achievements are are needed to move into the domain you want to. So before we move on to that, I want to just quickly talk about this run part of the crawl, walk, run. So the crawl is going to be the individual. And, you know, I I might go on and give you self-employed, you know, I could. So if I did the crawl, walk, run for a self-employed, it would be a self-employed to uh, his team would be contracts, uh, hires, um, you know, contractors that he hires or she hires. And then it would eventually be to moving up to having employees, which would be the run or your company. If we're talking about entrepreneurs, it would be the entrepreneur, you know, as we talked about before. And then the team might be virtual assistants. And then the run for 
the entre- entrepreneur might be an executive uh, limited liability uh, team or company that's put together for a specific purpose um, so that they still have the bandwidth to run their other um, entities without having to just be totally engrossed in one company. And then we can also talk about the uh, the the solo um, entrepreneur a general, you know, like we started out, that's going to be one person, then you move to a team, and then you move to a company. I just wanted to make sure I gave you that. So everybody's on the same page. I hope this is really opening up some ahas for you so that you'll know how to move. So now let's talk about uh, planning that big career win. So the first thing is, is you need to understand that there is a time for visibility and invisibility. And when you are being visible, you want to be uh, well insulated from the arrows, from competition, and from the environment. And most people get this wrong. They say, I'm running a business, and they think I go out and I tell everybody what I'm doing. And that might work for some things, but not for all or even most. And the reason why is because if you are constantly trying to get people to know you, see you, like you, and trust you, uh, it doesn't necessarily do you um, a good deal, a, some, a good deed to let everyone know what you're trying to do before you are established, before you have your loyal patronages or your your loyal customers or your loyal fans and you open yourself up because you're highly vulnerable to somebody who can come in and steal your idea, your market share and um, push you out of that market. And too many times people with great ideas didn't know how to hold their tongue and shut up about it and just do it and do it to the point where they are too well established or the barrier to entry is so high or so complicated that others are forced to to take a second seat or a seat in the back and this person is the lead of what it is they're doing. Now, we have mentioned destructive technologies on here. There are a whole bunch of things that I've been trying to give you guys. And because I want to, you know, continue to focus on wisdom, I don't really talk that much about business systems and career development systems on here. But today I felt it in my soul that I needed to talk to you because some of you are out here having your second, third, or even fourth career change. Some of you are like, what do I do? How do I live? How do I take care of myself? Some of you have always worked for someone else, and now you can't. You're begging to find a way to to work for someone else, and it's not working, and you need to find a way to take care of yourself. So let's get into With the limited time I have left, I'm going to try to cover a little bit of how to accomplish an achievement. And then, you know what, tomorrow I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more on all of the the other notes that I have for you. So when accomplishing an achievement, the first thing you want to do is you want to make certain that you understand how to implement and then execute. So implementation is part of the planning and it's part of the skills training that you become um, um, knowledgeable in that becomes a habit. So like when you talk about wanting to do something and you need to implement, a lot of people don't realize that if you need to implement changes to, to make something new, hidden within that implementation, a lot of times there are going to be new skills that you have to learn. So say for instance, you're going on your own. You have got an eye for color and you are able to put up beautiful things. And because you want to possibly become a graphic designer, you're like, okay, I want to do this. And you sit down and you're like, how do I go from what I'm doing now to what I want to do? And the first thing you're going to need to do is to implement. So to implement is to plan your overall strategy of, I am going to become this and this is my goal. And then the implementation is, what's the first thing that I need to do? Or what are the mandatory things that need to be done? I'm going to tell you up front, you 
anytime you want to implement something that's going to be an accomplished achievement, there is going to be a certain level of proficiency and even mastery required. So you got to make sure your skills level is there. Do you know how many people are making a killing by drawing now? And it is because they set out to do an accomplished achievement by learning their craft, by getting on the Internet, watching YouTube videos, buying little uh, how to draw a hand, how to draw a facial feature, how to draw a cartoon, how to do this and do that, how to do animation drawings and all of those types of things. And they paid their dues. Guess what? In the dark, invisible. Until they got to a point where they became proficient enough to say, okay, I know how to do this. And then they moved on to learning the skills of how to keep up with what is the minimum viable effort that you're going to need. So if you want to make your living as a um, um, a prolific artist and you go out and you realize that You can't keep up with just pencil drawings and then all this process offline. You're going to have to learn how to draw and line stuff and paint it on um, Photoshop. So you got to become proficient in Photoshop. You got to become proficient in the the process to to produce different levels of prints. And uh, you're going to have to learn how to set up a way to take the money online, you know, how to get your buy button up. And all of this is part of the implementation. Because guess what? After you implement learning, learning your skill sets, getting the container ready, then the execution starts. And the execution is, it's time to let the world know that you sell. Because have you ever seen anybody who they want to get money for their drawings and they don't really even have an implementation plan. And so they'll put some drawings out and everybody will ooh and all ah over them. And the first time someone says, um, I'd like to buy that, or I'd like to buy one like that, then it all goes hell in the handbasket because they have no structure, they have no understanding, they have no foundation, they have no framework, and it goes kaplooey because they can't really tell them how long it'll take it to, to deliver. They'll And I'm telling you this, like from personal, someone approached me is like, I'd like to do business with you. And when I did the usual and customary, here's my spec sheet. uh, Can you produce it in this and that? I want my CMYK colors. I want my 300 DPI. I want this. And they were like, "What, what does all that mean? I'm like, wait a minute. You draw and you don't even know how to deliver me printer ready uh, artwork. <laughs> and, and it was an uh, amazing thing. And that was a, one of the reasons why I started making notes about this a while back, because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking people know how to start planning their big career win when they don't. And so this is the foundational stuff. This is stuff that I charge people for. This is stuff that you will pay for in any kind of university work they're saw and any kind of real business coach is going to help you understand these foundational things. So don't take this lightly. So let's continue on in the few minutes we've got. And then tomorrow I'll talk about a critical thinking approach to planning your career win. How about that? Okay. So with your implementation implementation plan, that's going to be, if, if you were thinking about it in terms of a recipe or producing a food. So say for instance, your goal is to produce Thanksgiving dinner and You've never done Thanksgiving dinner before. The first thing you would need to do is assemble your known skills. Do you know how to cook? Do you know your way around the kitchen? And then not only do you know how to cook, do you have the materials and the the resources? Do you have an oven, a stove? Do you have mixing bowls, uh, pots, pans, uh, seasonings, food, all of those types of things? And so when I talk about implementation, think about it when you're gathering up the materials you're going to need and assessing the skills level required to pull off what you want. And then with implementation, it also brings you up to the point when you're ready to put things in action for production. Because I've had people ask me before, how do I know what's implementation and where it stops and when I'm moving into execution? Implementation is all that stuff before you start doing the action to produce what it is that you want to do. So your implementation is going to include getting the, the tools and the skills that you need. If you need access 
um, to a uh, a machine that makes yogurt or 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 uh, soft serve ice cream or a sous vide uh, apparatus or whatever it is, you got to go and procure all of that and become proficient in it so that you can get from your idea of your Thanksgiving dinner to the production of it. So once you've done that, then you enact your um, execution plan. Now I'm going to say this, a lot of people, based on what they know, some people can produce or plot out their implementation and execution plan at the same time, whereas others can't do that because you don't know what you don't know. And you've got to go through the implementation process to be ready to know how to execute. And so with the execution plan, that's when you actually start putting all of this into a a process and a procedure to produce. And it is when you start doing the cooking, you know, you can tell people, we're going to eat at this amount of time because now you know uh, what it takes to get everything ready and on the table and warm or hot by the time you said it was going to be. And you've got your process down, you know what you're doing, you have everything, and it should be running like a, a fine-tuned machine. And in those ex, um, that execution plan, all of those little components are called events. In my world, they're called events. And so you pull off your events and you have gotten your win. And it is a, it is a a similar situation when you're trying to pull off your career win. And so you guys, guess what? Yeah, my time is up. I thank you for yours. I am going to definitely finish this tomorrow and check the show notes for our links. Don't forget to like, share, support. And um, there are many different ways to support the show. And thank you so much. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, Please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.